Did you know that you could trigger an automation from Airtable by pushing a button? That's right. Inside of Airtable interfaces, if you push a button, you can make that the trigger for an automation that does pretty much whatever you want. If learning more about this is of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gareth and I'm the owner at Gap Consulting. Here we make it our mission to help you get organized and automated with no code tools. If that's of interest, before we jump into the heart of this video, I want to invite you to actually try out my automation training. I've built a special automation training, goes through the fundamentals of no code automation. It doesn't matter what tool you're using, Airtable, SmartSuite, Zapier, or Make, or any other one. You will learn the fundamentals in this training and start reclaiming your time because of the help of automation. If that's of interest, check out the training at garethpronovost.com slash webinar dash registration. I'll include links below this video. But without further ado, let's hop on into the heart of this. We've got to talk about how to trigger an automation from a button in Airtable. Now I want to point out that there are two types of buttons in Airtable. So let's go ahead and hop on into my screen. Here inside of my database, if I directly in the database add a button field, right here I can just bring in a button field, you'll notice that if I do this, I don't have the action to trigger an automation. So I can't start from here, I can't build an automation anywhere inside of this particular button field. So don't get this confused with the other type of button field that we have available to us. And that's the button field that lives inside of Airtable interfaces. So before we get into how to implement this button field, let's first take a look at our data schema in this example. So here in my Airtable base, I have three different tables. I have a consultations table, a consultants table, and clients. So in our consultations, you'll see that it's linked to both a client and a consultant. Kind of makes sense, right? A client books the time with a specific consultant for a particular date. And so we have all of that information here. Now we're also tracking the status of this particular consultation. So we have a few different options. It's an upcoming consultation. It's completed. It could be canceled and or rescheduled. It could be canceled or refunded. So there's a couple different options here, but we want to track all the different types of consultations in the various status that we've identified for our base. Now, the other parts of this are pretty straightforward. In the consultants table, we have the name of a consultant, we link to them on the consultations, and because this is an internal tool, we will also use the assignee or the user field here so that we can actually bring somebody in to this record. Now, this has to be an Airtable user, somebody who's actually given access to either your account, your specific database, or your interface. And we'll get into the interface accessibility in just a moment. Now, the other part of this is external. These are the clients, right? So somebody requests that consultation, their information gets filled out here. Now, I want to point out that before we build any automation in Airtable, especially if we're sending email, we want to use dummy data. And so here I'm actually using my own email address to send and receive emails so that I can make sure I'm not spamming a client something that I don't want to. So remember, just as a pro tip, always use your own email address whenever you're testing an automation from the get-go. So the idea here is that we wanna build an interface for our consultants. We want them to be able to log in and see their specific interface that shows them their upcoming consultations that they haven't yet attended. And then when they're done, we want them to push a button. And that button is gonna set in automation into motion. And that automation can do any number of things. Send an email to the client thanking them for the consultation, maybe sending them a survey request, also updating the status of this consultation to completed because it will no longer be upcoming. So the button push, it's initiated by our consultants who are working in the interface. That's gonna be the magic thing that does all of the automation. So now that we understand the schema and the problem that we're trying to solve, let's hop into building the interface. So simply in interfaces, start building. If you haven't done this before, just name your interface. I'll keep it standard for now. And then we're gonna start with a record uh, review. So we're actually gonna look at records and review the details one at a time at the consultations level. So we wanna look at the consultations table and bring them in one at a time. Now, right now, we just have one consultation. So let's go ahead and click next. Here's where we're gonna denote the table we wanna look at. We wanna narrow in on that consultation and we can apply some filters. So we might say, for example, we only wanna show those consultations where the status is upcoming. 
We don't want our consultants to be bothered by previous consultations or canceled consultations. Just look at the ones that are coming up. So once we establish those filters, we can go ahead and move on. We can also apply sorting and grouping. I'll skip that for now and move on to the next step. Here we're working with the different fields that we want to bring into this. So do we want to show the client information? Do we want to show the status? I don't need to show the status. It's redundant. We already know that it's upcoming. Uh, we don't need to show the consultant because we'll make sure that our consultants only see their stuff, for example. So we can decide what we want to bring in from the consultations table and what we don't want to include in our interface. Once we're good here, move on to the next step, give this a name, and then we're done. So here is our drag and drop interface and we are in edit mode. I can move things around and add new elements down here in the bottom left corner of the screen. So I'll leave it to you to play around with moving these pieces around. Maybe we even want to add new fields like allow our consultants to take notes on the consultation itself. We could drop that field in here and give them the ability to edit that field before they click the button that's going to change everything else and move this consultation to the next phase. But for now, our focus is getting that button in so that we can build an automation from it. So we go into the bottom left corner and we hit add element. Over here, we're gonna search for the different elements and we can go up to all elements on the side. This other list here by default is looking at the consultations record list. And so this is including information from the consultations table that we've already identified that we wanna focus on. But we wanna to go to all elements where we can bring in totally other unique things that don't already exist. And so by scrolling down here, we will find at the very bottom, the button element. We can go ahead and drop that in and choose to resize it if we'd like. And from here, you'll notice we have a few different options. On the right hand side, we can choose what action the button takes. Now we're going to ultimately choose that we want this to run an automation, but more on that in just a minute. We'll skip that for now. We're talking about the record source here. So what is this button referencing? What's the source of the button? Also, what happens when the button is pushed? So right now it's set to update the record, which we're gonna change. But you'll also notice that we can move over to appearance. So we can choose what the button looks like. Now, again, right now we have it set to update the record. So it's giving us a before and after it's been pushed kind of configuration here. So let's go ahead and now make that selection that we want it to actually run an automation. Now, once we do that, it's gonna ask us to choose the automation that we want it to run, which we haven't quite built yet. So we're gonna to have to pause, but now we can go over to the appearance and you see that we just have the one appearance. We can push the button and of course, make it any color we want and we can add a label to it. So let's say mark as complete. So now we have a little button here that's gonna say mark as complete, but it doesn't do anything. The whole point of this is to trigger an automation to do some magic stuff. So it's time for us to now in a separate place, build that automation. Now, I prefer to do this in a second window. I like to keep my interface open in one place and create my automation in yet another window. So to do this, I'm gonna go up in the upper left corner and right click on automations and say, open the automations panel in an entirely new window. That way I can just flip between these two windows and keep working seamlessly. So from here, I'm going to choose my trigger and we can go ahead and see that we have the ability to trigger when a button is clicked. So I'll make that selection for now. And when I do, you see that it says that the trigger is not currently associated with a button. So we do have to get the button in the interface talking to this actual automation. But before we do that, let's actually build the automation. Maybe what we want to do is update this record. So we can go ahead and make that selection in our action and what Table does this record live in? Well, it's gonna be in the consultations table. What's the record ID? Well, we don't have that configured yet, but ultimately we would want to update the status. So at this point we've hit a roadblock and we see that we absolutely need to configure that button so that we can build with that record through our automation. So we can flip back to our other tab now and inside of the button, let's go back to the action and remember we've told it to run an automation but now we're gonna denote which automation that is. And this is the automation that we're currently working on. Now to be better about properly documenting your automations, I should have given it a name before flipping back over here but because I only have the one automation, I absolutely know which one it is, so I'm gonna select it here. So the automation's not deployed, we haven't finished building it yet. Let's flip back into our other tab and finish building through this automation. So now I can go into my when button is clicked and choose a record here and actually activate records from that particular consultations table. So let's go ahead and pick that record and now we're gonna 
make that record go through the different steps that we build. So we can update the record. Again, we're going into the action step here. And now when we hit that, we're gonna have access to the button that was pushed for a particular record in that consultations table. So there it is, that's the record ID of the record that I wanna update, so we'll bring it in here. And now I can include some other fields as well. So in our case, we wanna update the status. Currently the status is upcoming, but when they mark this button, in pushing the button, they're gonna mark it as complete, so we're gonna make that selection. So that's what the automation is gonna do. Now in addition to this, the automation might send an email. So we can craft an email, maybe we're gonna send it through our Gmail account. And here we can link it up to our Gmail. This would actually send an email from our actual Gmail because we've integrated Gmail with Airtable. And we can say who we want to send this to. But you'll notice that we don't actually have an email address here inside of this actual record. So if we click into the client here, we don't have access yet to that email address. So let's actually flip one more time back into our other window, and here I'm in my interfaces. Well, now I actually need to add the right data here. So I'll right click on data and open this in a new tab as well. So flipping into now my data structure, you'll notice here on the consultations table, I don't have that email address, but the email address lives at the client level. So I need to bring it into my consultations table because this is the table that's actually triggering the automation. So I can look it up. This will be the client email and I can simply do a lookup field here, look at the link to our client and bring in the email address of the client. Remember, I'm using a fake email address here. Anytime you ever send an email in automations, always test it on yourself first. All right, so now I'm gonna flip back into my automation and now that I have access to that, I need to bring it back into the record. So I'm gonna choose the record again because we've added this information to the record. It doesn't know by default that we have added that. So now when I go down to the Gmail part, when I'm sending that email, I can bring in whatever subject I want. I can say test. But instead of bringing the client in here, I'm not sending it to the client record. I have to send it to the client's email. So if I scroll down, now I have access to the client email because I added that lookup field and there is the demo address. So I can say something like hi and then I can bring in the client name. So we have the client uh, here, just bring that in. Uh, thanks for your business or something like this. You know, Whatever body of the email you wanna add, make it more prolific than this. Uh, but we'll use this for testing purposes and then we can generate a preview and this is what it's gonna say. Once it pops up here, hey Gareth Pronovost, thanks for your business, or whatever your better version of that is. So once we're happy with this, of course the last step is to always test your automation. So we have to make sure to turn it on. Go ahead and rename your automation. Stay diligent on this, that way you don't get lost because it's a lot of automations once you start doing this and you don't wanna get confused in the future. But let's go back now to our interface. So our interface is good, I've got my button set up and it's no longer showing any warning signs. Everything's good. It's simply saying, when you click this button, I'm gonna run an automation. So let's publish our interface and take it out for a spin. So now we're in the published version of this and we can see we have a list of the different uh, consultations on this side and by clicking here, we're drilling into a specific consultation. And once we're good with this, we can mark it as complete. Now, a couple things are gonna happen. You see that the consultation was instantly removed from my list and that's because we applied a filter to our list to only show us consultations that are in the upcoming status. And now when we push the button, it removes it from that status. It marks it as complete, so it's gone. And in order to prove this to ourselves, we can flip back into our data structure here, and here's that record. It doesn't show up any longer in our interface, but it shows up in here in the data schema, and we can see that the status is completed. If we look at the record, we see that the automations ran just a moment ago and moved that from upcoming to the completed stage. So all of that was triggered by a button push in an interface. Now the last part of this is of course this email, so do check that the email came through appropriately. Here it is on my screen with the right subject. It was sent to me as it should have been. It brought in the right information. The body looks decent, although I'm sure you can make it much better. So that's it for triggering an automation from a button push. Note that that button has to exist inside of your actual interface and you can customize the interfaces way more than we did in this simple example. Limit who can see what, Airtable interfaces have really gone to the next level and I'm super excited about building more and more with them. 
I know we covered a lot and we went fast in this video. Feel free to reach out with any questions you might have. Thanks for checking it out. And of course, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on future no code news. That's it for this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. As always, I hope you found this to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website to see how we can help. We offer an exclusive free training that teaches the fundamentals of no code tools, including automation. We also have some paid services available, including advanced courses, no code hourly consulting, as well as custom project consulting. So swing on by to get the help you need, and we look forward to connecting with you soon.